I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and today I'm speaking with Max Lang and Daniel Snadden, the directors of the short film The Snail and the Whale, which has just made the shortlist to be nominated for the Best Animated Short Film Oscar. Uh, Max, the first question is to you. Um, you've directed, this is a, a yet another short that you've done that's been uh, adapted from uh, books by uh, Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Alex Scheffler. Uh, how did this working relationship uh, with these authors start? Um, well, it all goes back to 2008 when we were actually working on The Gruffalo, which um, is their most popular book. And um, we were tasked with uh, doing an adaptation of that book. And at that time, that task was quite daunting because every kid in the UK and even Germany knew the book and um, it's rhyming. And we were, our task was preserve the rhyme, don't add any... <laughs> dialogue or, or lines and um but make it half an hour and at that time we were a bit intimidated by that is, there, is anyone even going to watch that but as it turned out actually people really embrace that um kind of storytelling where you have a bit of moment to breathe and um and some quiet moments on uh, more character instead of plot these kind of things um yeah, and then so after the Gruffalo came Room on the Broom, and during that time, um, I started reading all their other books, thinking like maybe we can make another adaptation out of one of them if it all goes well. And I came across The Snail and the Whale, and I have to say it became probably my favorite picture book of all time. It's just so beautifully written, like the the, um, the prose, the rhyme. It's, it's just fantastic and it's just a beautiful story yeah. and uh daniel um the next question is to you um mm. uh this is uh your first collaboration as a as another director with uh max correct actually actually it's not a <laughs> second attempt <laughs> <laughs> well, so how did you how did you come on board uh to to this project and the other project as a, as a as a co-director with max it was, uh, it was quite serendipitous. So I had uh, co-directed another film called Stickman, also based on uh, a picture book by Julia Donaldson and Axel Scheffler, that Max had written um, the script for, the first draft of the script for, or uh, some drafts of the script for. And, um, and during that time, I was writing to Max because like you, I'd, I'd seen Room on the Broom and loved it and, and thought it was really, really wonderful and impressive. And I was interested to, to find out from Max how he and his co-director on that had worked, uh, Jan Lachauer. So I wrote to Max and said, hey, what, what, should I, what should I keep in mind as a co-director? And he said, oh, it's simple. Just don't, make sure you're both telling the, the, the crew the same thing. <laughs> don't, don't contradict each other and you'll be fine. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so we tried, Yuri and I uh, tried to implement that. And then, and then we both got the opportunity to work on uh, Jacob and Jan's film, uh, Revolting Rhymes. Max, you were doing some story work and story development on that. And I was an animation supervisor on that. And, and after that project, I did a bit of traveling with my wife around the world. And we happened to pop into LA. And because Max and I had been in touch, I just got hold of him over Facebook and said, hey, do you want to meet up for lunch? And we did. And we just got to talking about all sorts of things. And it just so happened that Max had been talking to Magic Light about um, maybe doing another one of these specials. And so I got a call a week later uh, from Magic Light saying, would you like to maybe think about doing one of these, another one of these books and with Max? So that's, that's how I got roped in. It's really funny because that book that we adapted was called Zog. And I was, by the time I got the offer, I, I don't think I told you this, Max. I was, I was traveling with my wife up north in Vancouver. We were visiting a friend and they went up to I think like one of the big ski places like Whistler or one of those places. And I was trying to find um, uh, a bookstore that would have Zog that I could, could read Zog. And then I like, like it was quite weird because I came across like a, a restaurant that was called Zog's. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign, I should do this project. <laughs> so uh, Max, uh, how do you, What's so interesting about these movies and so captivating is the animation style. Um, uh, it, it, it has, it feels like it has so much roots in stop motion. And I'm 
curious as to how do you go about achieving the look of this animation? Um, well, yeah, originally we actually, um, like we, we did these films um, on stop motion sets like the Gruffalo and Room on the Room are still done on stop motion sets, but with CG characters implemented. And the idea behind it was to, um, we were looking at Axel Scheffler's illustrations and they're just so beautifully crafted and they have so much texture. Um, if you would try to adapt that in a um, traditional uh, 2D style, you would lose a lot of the texture and the, the of, of these illustrations. And we, we felt that actually by going the stop motion route, we would be able to expand the world and while still remaining true to his um, illustration style. And so we, um, that's kind of how we started working on these. And over time, our style developed. So the snail and the whale is actually done in full CG, but we try to um, embrace a lot of these qualities that you get from stop motion. One of them, being just in terms of the sets and um, the assets and also the characters. There's this thing that I call like the, the human flaw, little imperfections that you get when someone crafts a, a sculpted, sculpts a tree or something. There's little fingerprints here. It's not perfectly straight. And those things to me make out the big charm from stop motion because you feel that human touch and the artist is still present in that work. And so we work really hard to get that into um, the, the computer generated images, which tend to be much more perfect um, and can be a little bit soulless speaking. So because you don't see the person behind it. Um, and, that, and then uh, a revelation that we had on Room on the Broom was that we would even start animating on twos, with, which means instead of 25 fr frames a second, we only do 12 frames if we can. Um, originally, we thought that would save us some money, <laughs> which, <laughs> so we felt like, oh yeah, let's combine the, 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 the useful with the, with the economic, but it turned out to be much, much harder, but we really loved the look of it. Um, so we kept doing it, but Actually, it, it always requires the, the CG animators to get trained um, again because they, they can't use the, the techniques they usually employ, which is working a lot with graphs and they have to be much more conscious of each pose um, for the character. Yeah, yeah. I'll just, I'll just uh, back up what Max is saying, um, that the, the team, when we're approaching the design of the sets and the assets, uh, we always um, go to we always try to find um, uh, DIY kind of model videos and um, and good references from people who love building dollhouses, miniature trains, work on stop motion films to see how do they approach constructing uh, these different kinds of things, whether it's trees, grass, uh, rocks, um, buildings, uh, because they come up with some really ingenious ways of of um, of, of making these things and. And part of the appeal that we're hoping to kind of capture is some of the thought process that goes into, well, if you have to build this miniature, how would you build it? What would you build a, you know, um, a, a whole sort of um, a town out of? <laughs> what, what are the materials? And, you know, and then try to get those like really nice scale relationships uh, that make things feel a little bit cute and, and like you're looking at like a, a, a beautiful like little miniature. So, um, Daniel, this next one is to you. Um, uh, what's interesting, uh, I'm guessing, uh, you know, in uh, taking, you know, these children's book and turning that children's books and turning them into, um, you know, nearly half hour uh, animated pieces, which for, you know, it, it, especially in a field like this is pretty long, uh, you know, considering how short most other animated shorts are. Um, what are some of the aspects, whether it's, you know, certain details or maybe even maybe a ga or gags or something that you put in there? Uh, are you able to bring it that you like bringing into these stories that are not part of what was shown in the original books? Well, that's a great question. And I think, uh, and Max, feel free to jump in at any moment. But I think that it's, 
It's interesting having been involved in a couple of different uh, of these adaptations because when we originally, when I originally started um, on Stickman and uh, storyboarding with your room, uh, my first instinct was like, just fill it with gags, <laughs> like a, take like a, almost like Warner Brothers approach, <laughs> you know, just like, let's get the gags in and, and, and it'll be fun. That can come at the expense of an emotional journey though, right? Um, if the gag isn't necessarily helping you understand the character, their motivation, creating obstacles for the character uh, and building a, a cohesive story, it can, it can get quite um, um, uh, noisy and not necessarily uh, build up an experience. And so I think that, um, and Max, maybe you can talk a bit about more about this, but with, with snails and the whale particularly, it's not really a, a, a comedy, it's much more of a poetic film. Uh, and, and so a lot of the stuff that um, uh, Max and Suzanne, when they were adapting the book, sort of added was moments to really build up the characters and their relationships. I think that was much more important, right? Yeah, I mean, there is this opportunity because, yeah, in terms of dialogue, there's only like seven minutes, <laughs> let's say, dialogue and narration. And there's this opportunity to, to invest that in character. For example, um, what we did for Snail and the Whale, like we gave the little snail a moment in the beginning of the film that is not in the book. It's one of the things that we added, where she actually tries to um, hitch a ride on her own and sail out into the world on her own and it goes horribly wrong. She almost gets eaten by seagulls. And what that helped us to establish was that she was trying, she, she had the drive to go out there. She was not just sitting there for someone to come by <laughs> and um, help her out of her misery, but it is a dangerous world out there. This established stakes as well. And um, it, it really, made her into this character. Yeah, she's a little snail with the itchy foot, but she's also brave. She's not intimidated at, at the beginning of the film. That only comes later as she gains knowledge and sees the world, she starts to feel small. Um, and then another thing that we um, took inspiration for, for, for this film, especially is like nature documentaries. Um, when you watch these films, like the, um, there's often, it's just the imagery and music and it's enough you know <laughs> sometimes it's enough and and just being able to pause for a moment and enjoy how beautiful everything is i think that's a big part of the theme of the film too you know it's really about celebrating the beauty of our planet and doing what we can to preserve it so um uh max this next one's to you um and this is about uh, the voice performers. Uh, it's it's so nice that you brought back uh, people like Rob Brydon and Sally Hawkins, who were both in Room on the Broom. Um, uh, and you also uh, have uh, also one of the last performances by uh, the glorious Dame Diana Rigg. Um, you know, what was it? What do you in, with with Rob and Sally? What do you enjoy most about directing them? And also, but with uh, with Diana Rigg, what was it like working with her? Okay. Um... Well, again, it takes me back to Room on the Room, like talking about Sally, where um, we had cast her at the, as the bird and she came in and she gives such a wonderful performance. And in my head, I was only thinking like, oh no, the bird only has three or four lines. <laughs> I wanna hear much more of her. Um, and I was already thinking about Snail and the Whale at that time. And I made that mental note thinking like, if we ever get to do that film, I want her to be the snail um, because I just love her presence that she has on screen. Also, like if there's a moment where the character doesn't talk, there's a lot of like breathing and just presence that has to go into characters like this. And, and she's just amazing at that. And then Rob is a very, very different performer. He can do any kind of voice. I remember when we first started working with him on the Gruffalo, he was a snake. And this was the first time working with anyone like such a caliber for me. I was like in film school still at that point. And he came in and he could do any kind of voice. <laughs> we were like, oh my God, he can do anything. What are we going to do now? <laughs> now we have to find the, the voice for the character. And that continued to um, the cat in Room on the Broom, which is such an integral character for that journey, but doesn't talk at all. And 
originally felt felt a bit self conscious about asking Rob even to do <laughs> to do a character like that. But it turned out he's also really really great at animal sounds. We thought we would have to replace all the purrs um, with with actual meows or a purrs from a cat, but he did all the sounds. And um, the whale as a character, he's he's much more like a bit more supernatural than the snail. Um, he and um, and a lot of his performances come out of whale sounds, and we used some real whale sounds, but also Rob's performance as a whale, and they're kind of just really beautifully blending into each other. And that's a big part of that character, I think, um, of the appeal of that character and why he has such a presence is because of that blend. And then you always said like, uh, the other thing that's really important for the whale who comes by and basically it's in the snail hitching a ride on his tail, you wanna feel that the whale is trustworthy and <laughs> such a big animal you do. You, um, so there's also a, a really nice sensitivity and trustworthiness in um, in Rob's performance. But I don't want to talk. Um, Dan, I let you talk about um, Diana. So I don't yes. Know. Well, in choosing a narrator, we, we we felt that we wanted someone who had a combination of authority and warmth, and who also had a, a bit of a, an edge and a bit of a twinkle in the eye because it's. You want you want the audience to really believe that, that things can go wrong, you know, <laughs> that that there is real jeopardy. And we just thought that, you know, she's uh, she had uh, in everything we've seen uh, Diana Reagan, she has all those qualities, and um, and it was a great privilege to work with her. And she was a, a constant performer, and had thought really hard about how she was going to narrate uh, uh, the film. And um, and I mean. To, to be in the be, to be sort of um, part of her recording session, you know she's a great actress. You know, she's a Dane, and uh, and and for us who work in animation primarily with you know um, people behind computers, it's it's quite an intimidating space to be in. So, uh, but she was wonderful. She would sort of after after she would do her take, she would like um, uh, talk, like look over to to our producers Michael and Martin and and to to us, you know, listening in. She would say, "Boys, what do you think?" <laughs> do, do we, <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was a really cool experience. And uh, uh, Daniel, this is to you. Um, you know, what, as I said earlier, that this uh, this film uh, made the shortlist for the Oscar for best uh, animated short film. Uh, Max can go into you know what it's like because he's been there before, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, he's been there. Uh, I should note that he that uh, Max has been nominated twice before for the Gruffalo and Room on the Broom. But uh, Daniel, this is your first uh, foray into this. And um, you're on the and you're on the shortlist. What was it like finding out that you had made the that the film had made the shortlist? It was a, it was a wonderful surprise. Thank you. I mean, there was there were a lot of um, films that qualified this year, and some of which um, I had seen because uh, Snail's been doing a bit of the, the festival circuit, and I just thought um, the the competition is uh, is so uh, uh, good, the the quality is so high, and there's so much variety and so so much. So many interesting approaches to animation um, that um, you know uh, you, you you try to keep your expectations very reasonable and uh, and to find out that we we actually made it onto the list. I mean, for all of us working in South Africa, it's it's such a a, a weird thing to be recognized in, in in this kind of a way. So we're very happy and grateful and really excited and 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 not 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 trying to. Um, to count our chickens before they're hashed or anything, but we are enjoying the moment while it lasts uh, that we're on the list, yeah. And the one thing I wanna to add to that is like, what I really love about the shorts category is that they, that all the films are so different. Even if you look at the 10 films that are on the short list right now, they're all magnificent and they're all so different and all special in their own way. And it's, I don't think you have that in any other category really. Um, where the competitors are so, <laughs> so different and so hard to compare. So for me, that always takes the edge off a little because I, I genuinely love all the films that are on the list. And it's like, it's, it's really comparing apples and oranges. And so whoever makes it, it's deserved, I think. It, it, and is it also just sort of for you, Max, is it also just sort of like, you know, a little bit of been there, done that since you've gotten nominated twice before. No, 
No, it was a little bit like that when we were got nominated for Room on the Broom because that was literally the second film I <laughs> directed in it. Um, but since then I've, I've made other films and I, I've come to know what a privilege it is to actually make it this far. Um, so no, I appreciate it very much, yeah. Well, uh, Max and Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best during this upcoming awards season. And to all of our viewers, please like this video, smash that subscribe button, and don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you so much, Charlie. It was a pleasure.